Okay, guys. So today, what we're going to try and do uh, is get the the wood mid rail in and the base rail in. Uh, if we've got some time as well, I'd like to perhaps get the door frame in for this end of the tunnel, and also at the other end, we're not going to have a door frame. We're just going to panel the back off and maybe have some window openings. I like to try and get that done as well. So these brackets will sit on the inside corner of the tunnels. Uh, we'll put them together, let them bolt with some washers, and then the wood bolts onto the side of it. Then intermediate rails on the hoops. We've got another type of fixture which is a bit more detail if you want to bolt through. And again, we'll do a mid rail and a base rail. Apologies if the audio is not the best. The only problem I think we have with these clamps is these are meant to be sat on a straight pile of pole. So the pole is not here. We can put these fences on the moment. So this is on a quite a bit of a slope at the moment, as is this side. So I'll tighten them on it and I might need to just bend these in place a little bit better just so we can get a nice good fit in. It might become irrelevant, it might just put itself tight, but we've always had the option of a twist to figure it out. I'm actually looking at the packet now. Um, it's only come with four washers, and in the packet of two of these corner brackets. So I think. The washers might actually be for where you bolt through the wood. We've got a different kind of bolt that sits in for the wood, so the wood will come through the holes for the wood for that. But we've got some extra washers, so every nut and bolt will have a washer on there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to use a laser line again. Um, it's a very bright day, so I'll use the receiver. I'm just going to put a line that's going to be level on all these tubes for the hoops. And the same on the other side, just for this um, midway bar. The line we set now is not going to be a fixed line. We'll probably bring these clamps up by about two or three inches with the aim of them, put them maybe back down to the line. We'll get the bars in first at the line. And then I'll make the decision whether or not I want to leave them at the line when we put the cover on and then pull them down below it to tension it. There we are. So we will do the same with the bottom line. Um, we'll do that a bit later on. Just get these side rails bolted up now. So for the wooden, the wooden mid rails and base rails, we've got to create a bit of a rebate. So if you imagine this is going to be bolted to the side of the tunnel. The polyphony is going to come over the hoop and down here. So what we need to do is create a rebate with a piece of one inch timber onto the two inch timber. So what will happen when we put the cover over, it will come over the hoop, over the top button, we'll tuck it in and down, and then the next button is nailed through that sandwiches everything together. So what we're going to do first of all, before we fix the rails onto the side, um, I'm going to go through this pile of wood. Uh, unfortunately it has come with nails in, so I'm going to have to denail it. And I'm going to get the side rails and bolt the, the first piece uh, of batten all the way along before I fix it up. That's going to just mean less swinging of a hammer against the tunnel. Obviously with the bottom one, I've not got much option because it's got to be in place to do that. Um, so we just pop through a load of timber, get them all fixed together. We've got the lens. They are a bit bent on length, but I'm hoping we can get, a, get away with it because we're going to be fixing it at quite a few points. Um, you know, pushing and putting some parts and clamping it tight should hopefully straighten them. But it's not going to cause much of a problem if there's a bit of a bow along the length of it because each 
time the tension, the sheep at the back end, when we fix that one solid, and so on the next one, so they'll be relevant. A lot of this timber I'm using um, is of previous projects. This is reclaimed, so we're trying to keep costs down and reuse as much stuff as possible. The problem we do have is a lot of the timber is not straight. So you see quite a lot of bending in more than one way there. A lot of new timber comes like this anyway, so there's no guarantee if I'd have bought this brand new, we'd have had anything any straighter. So what I am going to do, I'm going to pick a direction of the bend and try and keep them all the same way. And I think if I've got it bowing down, we're going to be pulling up on it with the tension of the cover. So I think that's probably going to be the best bet for it. If it was bowing up already, we're going to be pulling more of an arch into it. Whereas if it's bowing down, we should be trying to pull it back straight. So what I'm going to do now, this is going to be for the side that's kind of behind me. So I'm just going to come along the length of this and just nail along the top for the first part of the rebate all the way down. And I'll repeat that on all the pieces. What I'm going to do here is try to overlap this onto the next piece. I've got a metal plate to fix the two bits of timber together. So what I might do is carry on with the next one. Mark this piece of timber, carry on with the next one, but not start it until here. So I can nail this one on afterwards, because I'd like to get this one bolted up and then join them on. So I'll start on the next piece this far in. So there's my mark to show me where it ended on this one. I might just go a little bit tighter because I can always trim this one but I wouldn't want a little gap in there. I think I'm going to try and do now. I've got my line mark here. I'm just going to put this clamp just underneath it too, because I think about centre of that timber wants to be on that line. So I'm going to clamp that one there. I'll also clamp this end there. It's just going to need to roughly hold the timber up to see how it looks first of all. And then I can perhaps drill through it. Just going to see how these clamps are going to work as well. They might be perfectly fine on this face because the, this angle, thinking more on it, will probably be the same angle as the hoop. So it should sit fine. Hope these clamps hold now. Well. So what I think I'm going to do here, I'm going to leave this overhang slightly, so when this side comes in, I can fix them together. If I need to cut the corners off afterwards, I can always do it with a handsaw or even maybe a chainsaw. one it's just one one drill hole and a bolt that will go through the timber looking at the bolts they might be a bit short but we can always try again for some longer ones if they are for the intermediate hoops you drill two holes one either side of the hoop the bolts come from the outside of the timber around the, the clamps that's on the back of the hoop and then nuts and washers and tight and that just holds it in
So one dilemma of putting this rebate on before we fixed it is my fixing bolt's not going to be quite central. I'm going to have to drop it down so the head will fit below below the actual rebate. I don't think it's going to cause a problem, but it does mean I can't just measure to the centre. So hopefully now, by measuring down, put my little bit low there, I think it might drill down on an angle then, got the ability to do so. So I can just move this further that way. positioning. It's quite a big gap between here. It could be one or two things. It could be that a few of these hoops were not perfectly straight or the timber could be bowing. I know the foundation tubes are all in a straight line and perfectly plumb, so it shouldn't be that kicking it out of place at all. It's just possibly the bend in these. When I first brought them home I didn't notice that two of them were really badly bent. I think when the previous person tried to take it on the ground and didn't do a very good job of it. For marking the hole there, what I've done, I've placed the saddle that sits on the back on the front. And I just pulled the timber up against it and just pop the pen through to mark a hole on either side. Hopefully that'll get them in the right position. They might be tricky to drill through because they're quite tight to the post and the drill is bit I've got is not the best. I'm going to try and keep the drill. I think last time I kept it level. I'm going to have to keep it on the same angle as this face now so I don't have the same problem of it poking out too low. the opposite way now it's gone uphill too much so I'm catching on the outside but I'm hoping with a bit of gentle persuasion we can get it to be where it needs to go that's pulled through nicely I'd rather be like that honest sorry instead of being too low because it's just going to be more central. There's definitely a bow here. I wouldn't say it is the timber. I think it is the, the hoop of the tunnel. It's not going to cause a problem. On this end, I've left the length. I'll cut that off after. Um, because I've still not squared the end of the tunnel up yet. As I mentioned, these hoops, uh, these tubes were meant to fit to the bottom of this hoop. But because you've reduced the length of the tunnel, you have to fix them to the base rail when that's in. I'm only going to put one screw on each side for the moment because I did not put the right level further down. It's not too bad, there are a few dips where this back timber was bent originally. I'm 
struggling for this at the one or two points. And here needs to have an inch. So run along and fix the tube together, give them a bit more of a pull. We'll use the laser to get it as level as possible. I might do it when it's a bit darker, so I can put the laser right the way across, perhaps from the other side. Get the line as straight as possible, mirror it on the other side. Polygon will come over, we'll fix it all in, and then we'll try and pull these down again evenly. We're going to run along um, and make the rebate on this side using the, the nail gun this time, so hopefully it'll be quite quick and a lot easier. As you can see that was very easy coming along there then uh, I will say this is quite heavy um, I'm not used to using one by myself it does get quite weighty on the wrist but I think I do prefer it to swinging a hammer um, yeah it's done a good job with a good 50 right here through Okay, so a bit of a progress update from today. Um, so we've got both sides, base rail and mid rail on. Um, as you can see, it is, if the camera shows it, down the length of it, it does deviate up and down, in and out. And we've got the back mid rail on. So we plan on doing tomorrow now is trying to get this end sorted. fit the door frame end in now so I just pop the timber maybe put my up into the doors maybe just to get a bit of a straight line to work out where the center is now and then work the door frame away from that so I'm trying to hold this out of the Trying to decide how wide I want this door. I want to make sure I get in and out quite easily. With a wheelbarrow. But potentially still maybe be able to store stuff inside. And I think the biggest thing I would ever want to get to would probably be one of these if I need to wide. I might go for a one. 1.2 meter open. Quite annoying because the path is not central to the tunnel. So we'll have to make an intersecting path here at some point. And it should be fine with one door in there. I still don't know if I can put a sliding door on. The frame won't change regardless of which I do. So something's not adding up. I'm at the center of the tunnel. Um, and that lies at that timber. But now if I measure, I'm at the 
bottom of the tunnel. The centre is at that post. So we're about three inches off. I think I like to go central to the bottom, not so much the top. Because you look at that, we have two even borders. If I ever come off the edges of the door frame with timber in the future, could just be that the hoops are not really sitting as good as they should, but. This is going to be the lazy way of digging these two holes. Hopefully we'll keep it a little bit neater and tidier. So I've drilled two holes and tamped the bottoms. Using this piece of timber to get the front edge straight. Looking at I'm happy where it is. Something to do on the other start. Put a bit of loose right around the base. I have to create some key. So I've chosen not to concrete these in, surely because if they do rot, it's going to be a lot easier just to take them out with the mud around the base. And when when that mud's packed around them, they're not going to move. I'm not going to be digging that close to them on the inside. I've gone quite deep with them, so if I do decide uh, to plant right up close to them, it's not going to weaken the position where they're on the ground. Put the creosote on the base just to try and prevent a bit of rot. I've not fixed the side rails at the bottom or the, the base rails at the bottom because I don't know yet whether I'm going to pick the side rails up slightly just to keep them out of the mud.
this concludes the woodwork section of the polytunnel build. Just cutting the ends of the, the of timber there, just to go to the, the back mid rail, just to stop the polythene catching when it comes around the corner. So the next video will be us putting the cover on, which could be quite fun. Let's hope we've got a, a nice still day. Um, putting one of these on in the past, it's quite windy and it's not, not very easy.